And welcome back to another edition of Feel This Pain. I'm Ken McKim, and today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about cluster headaches. Now, what I'm about to share with you is not theoretical for me at all because I suffer from cluster headaches, although thankfully it's been a few years since my last bout with them. And for years I was misdiagnosed as having migraine, which is funny because the symptoms are not at all alike, so it was kind of frustrating. <laughs> to be misdiagnosed for that long. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with migraines, you know the symptoms, right? You are very sensitive to light, so you want the room dark, you don't move around at all because movement hurts. You're usually very nauseous, you feel like you're gonna throw up. And you know, for any of us who have drank too much, been hung over the next day and then had to throw up while our head was throbbing, you know how much fun that is, right? So yes. Welcome to migraine country. We're talking about anywhere from 24 to 72 hours of not wanting to hear any kind of loud noise and not wanting to be around any kind of light source and feeling like you're going to puke. Very different from cluster. Now for those people who suffer from cluster headaches, the pain is more, I guess, directed and I think more intense. It's a different kind of pain. I don't want to downplay what people who suffer with migraines go through because it's very painful. Cluster is like you have the throbbing from like a, a pulsing hangover type pain, right? But it's more right behind one eye or the other. It's usually uh, on one side of the face. So for me, it was on this side. The pain would be this throbbing thing, felt like it was right behind my eye, and my eye felt like there was so much pressure in it that it might just explode at any moment. It also felt like someone had stuck a hot poker inside of it, so it was burning, it felt like it was going to explode, I had the throbbing behind it, and it moved, and the pain was all the way up here, and then back down into my neck. And one other thing you'll notice with people who have cluster headaches is that uh, the affected eye will water just incessantly, just watering. It will be kind of red and irritated looking and then it might actually even droop a little. And that's very common. That's one of the, the hallmark signs of a cluster headache. And <laughs> what's even worse is you're not even safe from clusters when you're sleeping. In fact, it's typical for these headaches to start while you are in REM sleep. So you'll be dreaming and then you'll have this lovely pain just to wake you up out of a sound sleep and torment you for anywhere from one to three hours. Unlike migraine sufferers who don't want to move at all, we as cluster headache sufferers are compelled to move. You cannot sit still. You rock back and forth, you hold whatever side of your face is affected, and you cannot sit still. People with clusters frequently pace back and forth, back and forth, because a little bit of movement seems to actually help slightly. And let me say this, that little bit of movement gave me more relief than any narcotic painkiller. I don't know why narcotic painkillers don't work on cluster, but they don't. You know what else doesn't work on Cluster, at least not for me? Imatrix. <laughs> like I said, I had been misdiagnosed with migraine for years, and one of the things they tried to give me was a shot of Imatrix. I got a huge red rash all over my chest and I couldn't breathe. Imatrix tried to kill me. I'm lucky because the type of cluster I suffer from is what is known as episodic clusters, where you can have long periods of remission in between clusters. Now for me, my personal experience was that it didn't hit every day, it was every other day. So I'd be able to go to work one day, get the stuff I needed to get done, but as the day drew to a close I would have that dread of what was coming because I knew after my pain-free day the next day was going to be horrible, and it was. Halfway through my cycle, my cluster, the timing changed. So after getting used to being woken up in the middle of the night with, you know, 
some gremlin driving a railroad spike into my eyeball. Um, it started to happen while I was at work. So, <laughs> go to work on my supposed pain-free day, and then I would be sitting there at my desk and I'd feel it start. A term that's very familiar to people with both migraine and cluster, it's called shadowing. And it's just the faint glimmer of that, that ache, that pain. And you feel that first twinge and you're all, oh God, no. Because I knew I had maybe 30 minutes to get my ass home <laughs> before things blew up and into full cluster. And, you know, we tried all sorts of different therapies um, after we figured out it was cluster. What happened was I went to my wife's Christmas party one night. We had to leave early because the attack came right in the middle of the party. It was winter, there was ice on the ground. She drove me to the ER, and we all know, those of us who experience chronic pain, how much fun and, and how much sympathy we get when we go to the ER for pain medicine, right? So there I was, just in misery. And this time, the ER doc recognized that there was something else going on, that it wasn't migraine. I didn't know what to call it, so I've been calling it migraine. That's what I was told it was. And, and he noticed that, no, my symptoms didn't match up to that at all, and he was the one that put the name to it, Cluster. And so after that, Karina went on these support forums, and she found that some people had good results with oxygen. So I tried that. The protocol was 15 liters per minute of pure oxygen on a non-rebreather mask, and those are the, the full face masks that have no holes in them. So you just put that over and breathe deep and you gotta do it right at the beginning of the headache, otherwise it doesn't work. Well, it only worked for me maybe half the time, if that. And it was pretty expensive, even with the, the really good insurance I had at the time. So I kind of didn't do that anymore. And then about six weeks into my cycle, she had read that some people were having really good results with insanely high doses of caffeine. So she ground up some espresso beans and made two cups of coffee out of the same amount of beans you would usually make a 12 cup pot of coffee with. And she just put it in the fridge and then the next time I had an attack, dumped some cream and sugar in there and I drank it down instead of three hours of agony, after three minutes, the pain, which had started out just like normal, went away. Well, I'll tell you what I did. I stayed up all night playing video games because I was wired. That's a lot of caffeine. And then we just kept that on hand, and there were days where it would work better than others, and there were still some days where the pain would break through anyway, and I'd have to, you know, come back home and go through the whole thing again. But by and large, Having that cluster coffee, as we called it afterwards, really did make life bearable and got me through the rest of the, the cycle. But I always live in fear. Any, any little twinge on this side of my face that lasts more than you know, a few minutes, I, I still get freaked out. <laughs> and that kind of pain stays with you. So, so that's it. And as always, if you have any questions, please go ahead and email them to me, ken at don'tpunishpain.com. That's also my domain name for my website, don'tpunishpain.com. And on that website, you will find links to my Facebook group, my Google Plus page, and my YouTube channel. Speaking of which, if you are interested in learning more about the challenges that the chronically ill face in today's society, I would invite you to watch my first video, The Slow Death of Compassion for the Chronically Ill, which you can find right here on this YouTube channel. It's about 32 minutes long, but I think you'll find it's well worth it. So, until next time, thank you for watching. I'm Ken McKim. You take care.